Hi everyone and welcome to this quick uh, Revit 2014 tutorial to show you how to model piled wall systems. So in this example I'm going to show you something relating to sheet piling as you can see here but you could use this for um, secant piled walls or contiguous piles um, and walls of that type of nature. So in Revit there's nothing really out of the box that enables you to do this effectively other than placing every single pile manually which is obviously very time consuming. So I've come up with uh, a method here of using adaptive components to achieve this. Now in the past I've used uh, some curtain wall systems which haven't really been as successful as this approach. So let's uh, have a look at um, the results. So obviously if I go into some drawings here, let's just have a look at the uh, sheet here. You can see it produces some fairly fairly nice looking drawings. Um, also, the appearance of the poles should be absolutely perfect. Now, in order to show you this, I'm just going to hide this capping beam here. Okay, and we'll get in here. Oh, we can see that there it's all spot on, even though that's going through a curve and indeed through 3D space as well, because the back of the um, the back of the pole wall here, as you can see, is uh, changing in level. So the way to achieve this is to actually use adaptive components. So what I'm going to do here is start from the beginning and I'm going to tab to one of these families and go ahead and edit this. And you can see what I've actually got here is a generic adaptive model family in here. And basically I've hosted in a standard uh, Revit family. So I'm going to edit this family. And all we've got here, if we go into the categories and types here, you can see I've done this as a structural foundation. Um, it's always going to be vertical in here and very very simply you can see this is uh, just a very simple sweep so we've taken a profile in fact I've just um, downloaded from a website and I've swept that down a path so then what happens is that's then um, inserted into this adaptive component so what you actually do here is you when you when you actually work in uh, like this you can place a point down and you can select the point like so and you can make that point adaptive yeah and then that point can have all sorts of various different properties yeah so uh, here you can see it's a placement point um, it can have an orientation in here and so on so if I show you the point that I've already placed let's just expand my properties window out a bit then you can see here it's going to be vertical on placement and it's adaptive okay so once we've got that what we basically do is we host that into yet another adaptive family. So I'm going to uh, do this bit from scratch for you. So I'm going to create a new family here. And in this example, I'm just going to say metric generic model adaptive. So that's the uh, Revit family template file that I'm going to begin with. Okay, and at this point, obviously, you're going to need to have some sort of idea of the layout of the uh, piled wall system. So in this example, I'd probably start off by importing in some CAD data from, from this. So obviously, you can just go and, go and import some CAD data to give you a background, if you like, and then you can draw your path over the top. Um, I'm just going to draw something from scratch here. So I'm going to use a spline in this example. So I can draw some sort of a spline like that. I'm going to 3D, you can see now that's what I've got. Okay, so 310 meters of spline. Let's just uh, make that a little bit less radical. Something like that. Okay. Then the next step is for us to divide this. So you can select the spline, and you'll see on the ribbon here you have the option of dividing the path. So I'm going to do that. And you'll see at the moment that it's broken it down into six divisions. Now the layout has a number of different functions we can use. And what I want to do here is use a fixed distance between these nodes. And a fixed distance needs to match the pile, which in this instance is 900. Now you'll see that it's measuring it along the called length, which is exactly what we want. You've got segment length, which is the true length of the curve. But don't forget these piles are obviously going to be um, linear in, in measurement. So I've taken a measurement across the pile, it's 900. So therefore I want the called measurement. And you can see now we have these various different points uh, being displayed. And of course you can get it to show the node numbers. Um, if you wanted to, you could reverse the direction of this as well. So I could flip it so it measures from the other side. But anyway, that's our layout that we require. So the next thing is I'm going to now load in that family file. So 
If I switch back to my family, I can take this and load this into my uh, family that I've just created. So let's go into 3D here. And then I'm going to place this in. So I'm going to go to the component button. Okay, you can see that I can now snap it to these points. Yeah, and I can go wherever I like on these really. So I'm going to start off by picking on that one there. Now in this example I've set it out from the pile center like that. Then I can simply select that pile and you'll see up here we have the ability to repeat that and all it does is it sends it down the path. Now of course the beauty of adaptive components is they'll update and change when the path changes so if we have any design changes which of course we, we're very likely to have on this sort of thing then you can very easily open up the family file play around with the curves like this and you can see it updates that family file yeah so quite a good little solution okay hope that helps